Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. How lovely it is to begin our day by praising and worshiping God. I would like to read from Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5. And as I do, I pray that this will be our shout out. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord, this is our shout out. From our innermost being, we bless your holy name. Lord, we come before you with praises in our mouths. We declare your goodness and mercy. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your steadfast love that is new every morning. Amen. I'm waking up to your glory. Mercy falls like the sun still rises. Your grace is new every morning. To light the world with the hope inside us. I hear the sound of a roaring anthem, burning with your love. Let every voice sing, let every part of me speak all you've done.
us continue in an attitude of prayer as we take a moment to join our fellow believers around the world through Unite 714 to pray for the nations of the world. Joel 2, 28 and 29 And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Acts 2, 16 to 18. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, and in the last days it shall be, God declared, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Malachi 4.2 But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace today, and we are mindful of your ancient promise to pour out your Spirit on all flesh, Although this promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, history bears witness to the fact that countless times, through fresh outpourings of your Spirit, you have revived your church and saved the lost. Our economies have been impacted by this pandemic, and our nations have been shaken. Yet, there is great promise hidden in this pain, because the nations of the world have been ripened for harvest. Like we see in the book of Joel, we ask for revival and harvest to come through a fresh outpouring of your Spirit. Lord Jesus, we cry out for your church to be revived and for millions to be saved. Today, we stand in awe for your, for your care for the peoples of the world, for it is an all-encompassing, loving care that extends to the spiritual, emotional, relational, physical, and material needs of every human on our planet. Knowing that your omniscient eye misses nothing, we ask you to heal those who have been afflicted with COVID-19 and comfort the hearts of those who have suffered loss. Lord, we boldly come before your throne today asking you to eradicate COVID-19 from the earth and to heal our nations from the ravages of this pandemic. We ask for a spiritual awakening in the nations of the earth. Amen. For our morning devotions, we continue to study from the book of Proverbs. Today, we will be learning from Proverbs 28. This chapter contains 28 verses and talks about many themes, but I would like to particularly share from verse 1, which says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The book of Proverbs uses contrast a lot as a style of writing. For example, good, evil, wise, fool, blessings, curses, I think this makes it easier for us to visualize two distinct paths, one leading to life, the other leading to death, one leading to light, the other leading to darkness. By doing this, the answer becomes obvious. It's easy to identify the right choice, which is the path to light, not the path to darkness. God wants us to choose life. Verse 1, the one that we read, is no different. We find contrast between wicked and righteous. The wicked flee, the righteous are bold. But I would like to focus on the righteous. As we study the righteous, we will also see what the wicked is not. First, I ask the question, why did the author compare the righteous with lions? I realize lions are one of the most feared animals in the wild. They are a symbol of courage and fearlessness majesty and authority now the word righteous what does it mean righteous means we are in right standing with god not because of what we have done but because of what jesus has done for us how do we become righteous 
we become righteous by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22 in NIV, it says, this, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. When we believe, we are given that righteousness. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, that is counted to us as righteousness. You know, as we receive Jesus and as we believe in Him, another thing happens. In John 1, 12, it says, But to all who did receive Him, who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Being righteous has now become our posture, and it comes with authority. That authority puts confidence and boldness in us. As we think of who we are in Christ, being children of God and in right standing with Him, that gives us boldness. It gives us confidence. This boldness this is not based on personality. You know, a timid person does not mean he is less confident or a loud or talkative person does not mean he is more confident. This confidence or this boldness is inherent in the righteous. Our faith produces boldness in us. God did not give us a, give us a spirit of fear but of power and love and of sound mind. Let us nurture and grow strong in that confidence by spending time in the Word of God. Now what are we to be bold about? As righteous children of God, there are many things he wants us to do confidently. I have listed down a few. First is, be bold to enter the most holy place. Hebrews 10.19 says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. Also, in Hebrews 4.16 it says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, God wants us to confidently approach the throne of grace. He wants us to be comfortable in His presence. When we need anything or at any time, He doesn't want us to hesitate spending time with Him. You know, as I think of myself as a child of God, I try to observe my own kids, how confident they are with us as their parents. You know, my kids, I see them, they just enter my room, they just lie down in my bed, they just do what they feel like doing in my room, and they feel free and comfortable, and they, they, they're not afraid to do that. I think God wants the same with us he wants us he wants to see us comfortable in his presence he wants to see us uh just spending time with him anytime you know i know some it's easier to approach god when we are in good behavior but what about when we feel unworthy you know all the more that we need to approach the throne of grace in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we receive the truth of this scripture, you know, imagine yourself, you are forgiven of your sins and by faith you are cleansed. We are cleansed from all unrighteousness. Then what is left? Only righteousness is left. Wow, I hope that that puts confidence in us to always approach God anytime. In whatever time it is, whether we are in trouble or whether we feel unworthy or when we are happy, I, I hope that we will always find the boldness to approach the throne of grace. You know, it's all right to invade God's privacy. He is our Father and He enjoys our presence. Another thing that God wants us to confidently do is to ask. Just be bold to ask Him. 
you know, 1 John 5, 14, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Oh, I pray that we will see the truth of that scripture. And He says that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And we should have that confidence in approaching Him. You know, um, as children, God wants us to ask Him. You know, I remember growing up, I always go through my mother to ask something from my, fa from my father. But then later I realized that my father enjoys me asking from him directly why because he feels more like a father to me and he feels like i'm more a child to him that way as a father he wants to provide for me and he wants to give what i want i think the same thing with god god wants us to ask him so that he can provide everything that we need he has made all the preparations for what we need and let's just be bold and ask him you know but you know you say what if we ask not according to his will you know it's okay god can easily guide us and god can easily correct us when one of my kids asks something ridiculous all i say is no way or that's not for you or you know we just talk about it and I just guide that the child or I just correct him. But it's a joy that when they come to us and ask us for something and if we can give it to them, it's a joy to give to our children. The same thing with God. So uh, let's be bold and ask God for anything. That's what he said. God ask him for anything okay the third thing you know be bold about is be bold to face danger in hebrews thirteen six, it says so we can confidently say the lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me also in psalm thirty four seventeen. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. I know we face many uncertainties right now. And I don't know what troubles or danger you are facing right now. But Jesus knows. Jesus knows those troubles. Jesus knows those dangers. And he promised that when that righteous cry out, the promise is that He will hear us and He will deliver us from all our troubles. He is our helper. His arms are not short to save. He is mighty to save. Let us continue to put our faith in Jesus. Let us continue to nurture that confidence. And let us build our confidence in the Word of God. Because we will find all the promises and God is a promise keeping God. He will, he said he will hear us and he said that he will deliver us. Let us walk with confidence in God the Father who walks with us. Let us walk with confidence in walking with the word of God. Let us walk in co with confidence in obeying the commands of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we are not walking alone during this time. Thank you that we can have the peace in knowing that you are our father, that you, our Father, are watching over us, guiding and leading us, and protecting and providing for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
you, Lord. Let me pray a prayer of blessing for all of us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.